the subject is the state of the chapter. And um, I will be dividing this presentation into four sections, education and outreach, stream quality and monitoring, chapter activities, and stream projects. Start with education and outreach. Uh, Judy Sittler is the uh, chairman of the outreach and youth committee, and this is the only fish that we know of. We're not sure. She claims it. She claims she claims there's others, but we're not we're all, not at all confident. There's no evidence. Was that after they were electric fishing? <laughs> Uh, we had 20 events last year, and uh, I'm going to try to go through these things fairly rapidly. Um, but uh, you remember Trout in the Classroom. Judy went to uh, a local organization of women called Women Who Care and made a pitch to them. And it's, a, it's an organization of women who they go for one or two or three causes at our once a month meeting, and when they select it, they all sit down and write a hundred dollar check for whatever the winning charity is. It's four times a year, don't. Oh, it's not monthly. No. Oh. <laughs> Sounds good. At any rate, uh, they made a twenty-four hundred dollar donation toward our Trout in the Classroom program, and uh, it's been very helpful. Uh, we're rapidly using up the money, I think, uh, Mario tells me. Uh, Dave Trisdale is the, uh, a member of the committee, and he works on, on the Trout in the Classroom program. Uh, Judy also attended the team summit in Asheville, Tennessee, which is a great team, team program. This was the third year, and I think you'll be going again this year. She's the national uh, youth coordinator and fourth this will be as well the fourth year it started here at state college yeah. at Paradise. that was the first year um we we did a lot of attending of penn state classes uh there were uh, a landscape architecture class did a bunch of work on on various stormwater projects and we attended and uh, uh critique their, their work. We also participated with an economic class that evaluated some questions about stormwater once again. And actually, one of them created a, a survey that went out. So we, we were fairly active with the Penn State classes this year. Um, this event, uh, we invited uh, the township supervisors from all the local townships down to um, Slab Cabin Run um, near Atherton. And uh, this is Tom Green from uh, Fish and Boat and, and Jason. And uh, they went through and did some electroshocking and electroshocked that section. And we had, uh, you know, basically an educational session to bring some of these supervisors up to speed on what some of the problems are, particularly the stormwater problem coming off of South Hills, and uh, they were quite interested in that. that. Um, Bob Carline coordinates uh, a youth service bureau uh, fishing trip, take get, get fishing out to. Lamar, which is a great event every year. Um, we had a, a cooperative partnership uh, at Penn's Cave where uh, we represented um, and John Arway, who's the chairman of the Fish and Boat Commission. Everybody knows George, George Daniel's wife, Amity, and I don't know who Froggy or Judy is. <laughs> Uh, but we participated, Dick Shreve and Diane Brown uh, were out there teaching the kids. It was just, it was really a nice affair and the, all the kids enjoy that. We, we have a, about 20 different events like this over the, the year. Uh, Wayne's Coldwater uh, Kids with Greg Hoover, who will be our speaker in May. 
May. Um, and we had Willie, Kemp, Voight, Belden, and Lanning. And then I couldn't, I didn't know who the rest were. So, uh, all who participated. It's a really neat day. Uh, the kids get a chance to, to fish. They have a mentor and uh, they learn to fish. And some of them have fished before, some of them haven't. The Brookies Leadership Camp, which is out of the Seek Center. Uh, we had volunteers like uh, Dave Dudukovich, who pretended to teach the kids how to fish. Oh, very nice. And Corey Stoner uh, were there along with, with Judy. And uh, we just heard from them that we'll be doing it again uh, this year with them. Uh, Arbor Day at Penn State. And I, I wanted to show this because uh, this device is um, called an Enviroscape. And if you pour water on it, it leaks oil and gas and things like this. And, the dogs poop, and it's, <laughs> the, the kids just love it. They just hang around to, to watch when she pours the water on it. And we had been borrowing the conservation districts, uh, which was kind of difficult at times because you have to get over and get it. So we've now purchased uh, that so that it's more available to us. Um, this is the group of volunteers that were at Arbor Day. Uh, the, the, both the Voights, Dick Shreve, Jim Lanning, Gene Brensley, and Dan. Dan is almost to all these things. You remember we started the Y Trout program uh, last year. And I, I have to tell you, this, is, this has gotten unbelievable publicity. It, it, it took the, at National, they talked about it. They'd never heard of it. Um, the uh, at the at the national meeting and uh, we want to expand this program uh, to other places because the visibility the number of kids it reaches is much much greater than than a, than a, a classroom classrooms kind of limited it, they get more intense but this reaches adults and kids and last year um, I met a guy at the why, and he had gotten a letter from me asking for a donation for the banquet, and he sent in 250 bucks as the CEO of Rex Energy. And it was all, I mean, we reached a new person who, he doesn't fish, he just recognized the Trout Unlimited. Um, this year, we, in the spring, we released them up into the stream by Whipples. And here's a little excited little boy releasing the what six or was it seven? Yeah, it was a, it was a, they, they had some diseases, um, and, and of course Dan is, as usual did the cooking. He's always doing the cooking, and uh, we fished with the kids. We had about twelve kids that were there, and they spent the evening uh, fishing. And this was taken a couple of days ago, and uh, what the, I haven't been by, but what they tell me is because of the number of fish, the people are just really excited about it, and they, they can't, you can't walk past it. It's right at the entryway. Uh, Judy and I did an outreach. We actually did several outreaches at um, Appalachian Outdoors. They are very supportive of us. Uh, we, we went down and, and sat outside of there on uh, the uh, Center Gives uh, uh, Day of Giving, and uh, they, they applied for a, a grant for us of $500, and all we had to do was sign our name to it, and we got $500. Um, this is a, a 216 project. Um, the picture that that may looks a little bit like Judy, but this is the uh, stone and plaque that's outside the duck pond, recognizing the effort in 1973 or 77 on uh, in January when uh, the Hawbaker and Center Country and so forth repurposed uh, uh, or rechanneled uh, Thompson Run. Uh, 
another of our, our outreach <coughs> programs is the Veteran Service Program, with uh, led by Jim Lanning. Um, we had uh, we have a number of special presentations, basically, and I think I repeat myself here a little bit. But in the winter, we we fly tie, and in the, the spring, summer, and fall, we we do fishing. And these were some of the pictures from last year, uh, the, the fly tying with Steve, Joe, and this is Ted. He, he and Dan are the chief lieutenants along with Zach Salida, who really make the uh, veteran service program. And we hear from National that this is probably the best veteran service program in the country. Um, here's a, a Sunday, with, and it's typical of the number of people who show up. Sometimes not as good as this, sometimes more. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is that we do more than just help them learn how to fish. Um, these guys, <laughs> uh, we set up with the state police, they were going to take the police exam and so we lined up um, some guys that had just passed uh, the police um, test and uh, mentored them. And um, who is it that's... Chris? Right now we got Chris Coleman, who's a, a former Marine. He is the platoon leader, which means the head, uh, the head uh, uh, student in there. He's three quarters of the way full through. He'll graduate in May. The other guy got injured, got a so shoulder separation. And, and, and fall out. And this is Chris. Yeah, that's Chris and his wife, <clears throat> B, who is a better fisherman than he is. She All actually right. came out and learned from our streamside mentors. And B is really a squared away fisherman. Uh, we, have, as I was saying, we have fly tying here in the uh, the YMCA, fishing twice a month in the in the summer. They do community service, outreach programs to uh, various places such as Liberty Hill and vets <coughs> facilities like the VFW and so forth. They have programs at every event we got, we participate in, uh, including ones at the Y that aren't even mentioned here, and the, the veterans program um, that I just mentioned. And you wanted to uh, say a word. We always want streamside mentors, so all you folks with skills, Dan has the clipboard here. Give him your name and your email and you'll be automatically notified. We run year round, we have a little hiatus late November, December time, but we'd be happy to have you. And every skill is needed. The, the mentoring that you do is in your vocation or former vocation, there are students in every single specialty who are vet, veterans and they will be asking you about your past and how to break in to what they want next in their life because of the fact, remember, they either served four or eight years, so they're four or eight years behind. So what we try to do is open up the doors. We have folks that offer their employment and other things. So we're always looking for streamside mentors because our program is one-on-one -on -one with the vets. Okay. So here's a, down here a couple of examples <clears throat> of, of what they've done. Uh, Central Pennsylvania Festival of the Arts, which is the same group that puts on first night. And uh, you can see them there. And then the Military uh, Week tailgate. Uh, the winter schedule, pay attention to this because uh, this, this is a fantastic program and you've all received the schedule. <coughs> Steve Zelensky, Spring Creek Flies, Greg Hoover, Bugs, casting instruction and practice at the, at the Y, and then this colonial angler, uh, he, he's from the seven, he gets up dressed like a 1700s guy and talks the way through uh, what it was like back in the 1700s and apparently a really fantastic program. So that's the winter program for uh, the vets, but others are invited as long as they're interested. Yeah, you don't have to be a vet to attend these programs. Are you going to record the Colonial Angler by any chance? I don't know if you'll let us, we'll have to check. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. Really? <laughs> yeah. He's supposed to be great. 
Okay, another thing we do is stream yes, quality. Um, this is, we don't talk about it very much, but we are very active with the uh, Water Resources Monitoring Project. Uh, that was started in 1997 and is supported by the townships and Clearwater and Penn State and us. And the uh, purpose is to gather data about the stream and then do some analysis of the data and issue uh, reports. They have 15 uh, watering monitoring stations, three ground watering uh, stations, and eight spring monitoring stations, all collecting the data. And um, the management is not really a, like a board of directors, it's a, a committee, and um, theoretically uh, local environmental professionals. That's their word, not mine. Um, but uh, Bob Carline and I, uh, the two Bobs, are uh, have on that committee. I think Bob's been on the committee since the beginning, and I've been on since January 1st. Um, we contribute $2,500 a year toward that effort, and uh, it, is, it is really an excellent effort. One of the things they, I mentioned they do is an annual report. All the reports are available on their website in a PDF format. And this is a particularly, this is the, the one from this year, or last year, 2000, issued in 2015, and it's, it's um, the data's up through 14. And uh, it talks about uh, the impacts of, of chloride and, uh, in the water, and particularly, you know the source of that is, is salt, so it's a particularly interesting subject for Scott Brumbaugh. <laughs> Um, we also participate in the Spring Creek Watershed Association. <coughs> Judy is the chairperson of that group. We attend the Spring Creek Watershed Commission, uh, which is a monthly political organization, and uh, you can see any of those meetings on um, CNET. Um, we sponsored a rain garden in, at Easterly Parkway you, uh, in conjunction with Penn State. And um, we also sponsored one at uh, Milesburg, or not Bullsburg, uh, with Penn State and uh, Denny Haymeister, who's the chairman of the Spring Creek Watershed Commission. We're also active with uh, the development of a multimedia atlas that is addressing the water uh, in, the, in the Spring Creek watershed. And um, the, the, the thing that, that I'm doing with them is to create a interactive map of all the projects that I can find that have ever been done on Spring Creek. And if you click on a pin in, in the, uh, on the map, it brings up the history of that project and defines things like um, mud sale and so forth. And uh, that's what I'm doing in my spare time for, for that organization. Um, we also provide many of the uh, um, stewards in the Clearwater program and also with PSEC and the, the monitoring of, uh, I, I work at Buffalo Run and uh, there, there's a whole bunch of guys, you do. I work at that. Ed, uh, Creek, yeah. Connor Ed does. Jeffries. Ed Jeffries. Yeah. It's, it's the, a ton of support. And you guys provide support financially, too. Yes, we do. Um, Scott is the Legislation and Watershed Watch Committee Chair. And this is, I just wanted to show this because, not so much for the content. So I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. but. We found, we found a, a problem with leakage, uh, drainage, at uh, the Calvary Harvest Fields. And this is the next four or five slides are what Scott put together to send to uh, the Center uh, County Conservation District to tell them what was going on. So I'm, just, I'm not going to say much about these, but this is, he talks about the background, what the findings are, 
He has pictures of it in detail, shows all the problems with the material, where the water is exiting and showing that it still has problems, muddy water, and, and showing as it enters the, the stream. And I just wanted to point out the, the level of quality of work in providing this to the, the Center County Conservation District. And that's all uh, Scott and his excellent work. Um, some of you know about the Belfont flood wall. Uh, we started in 2013 when they uh, were proposing the wall and uh, we met with them and suggested, uh, along with Fish and Boat, that they should provide habitat work uh, in the stream when they actually did the work on them. Because this would be the last chance we have to do anything about that channel going between Lamb Street and, and High Street. And um, we met, we went to some hearings on it. Um, they kept the the the, con the consultant didn't really want to do it. Belfont did, and eventually we got them to agree to a design that had been worked out with um, Tyler Neiman of uh, Fish and Boat. And uh, in 2015, they 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 got the the approval, and they uh, they bid it out and Glenn Hawbaker, Danny Hawbaker, won the, the bid and we participated, we went down and met DJ, the supervisor and so forth. And on uh, October the, uh, um, what is it, what? no, it was September, September about the 27th, we got a call that said, can you help us in, in the design of this? And Tyler couldn't come, and we managed to get Carl Lutz, and we went down on Monday. Um, and uh, the, the concept was that they would have an overhang, like a mud sill, uh, three 50-foot uh, mud sills, and they would put in some multi-log diverters. Well, when we got down there uh, on Monday, we found that the logs that they'd ordered were too short. So we called our supplier and got the logs delivered by Tuesday, which was the, la the next to the last day that we could have done the work, and there was major storm coming. So we got it delivered. You can see the weather's not so hot. This is the first one going in. This is Tuesday afternoon on the, la the next to the last day of, of September. The next morning, you can see they're underwater by about a foot, and uh, we couldn't have done the we couldn't have done the work the next day. We couldn't have gotten into the stream, so we were fortunate to be able to. And here's what it looks like, yes, a day before yesterday. The the walls all built up, and we have the protection. And surprisingly, I went to a glass place to that yes yesterday, and. Uh, the guy I was talking, he, he, he knew that I was in Toronto Limited. He says, hey, I've been driving past the Belfont uh, wall, and I wondered why those logs are pointing upstream. So people are noticing. And you know, I explained why, because he thought they should go downstream, which is the conventional wisdom. But I thought it was pretty interesting that their just casual guy was quite aware of what we, we do. We also do the... Uh, Clearwater or the uh, Spring Creek cleanup. Um, from 2008 to 15, that's been Chris, and now the guy that's requesting a recall is going to be the chairman. No, recount. No, recount. Re recount. <laughs> um, this was our youngest volunteer this year. These were the guys that didn't do any work. <laughs> And uh, I should have included Palmer among the guys who didn't do any work, <laughs> since he's here. Uh, it's, but it's typical. It's unbelievable if you, uh, I should some year get the, the numbers of the amount of junk that they've taken out of, of the, the county on, on the cleanup day, because it's, it's phenomenal. And it's, 
Um, something we did a little different this year was the red count survey. That's been going on since about 93 and off and on, kind of coordinated by um, fish and boat and uh, with our volunteers, but not every year. Well, this year we decided to do a little bit differently and uh, Joe Boston and the Con Conservation Committee took it over. Uh, we had 41 volunteers in total, all on basically on one day. A few did it on other days. Uh, we went from Spring Creek all the way from the mouth to Bullsburg, every section, and we included Slab Cabin from the, uh, from the confluence with Spring Creek all the way up to Mitchell Farm. So for the first time, we, nobody's ever done uh, Slab Cabin before. The other thing we did is we decided that historically all we have is records for about a mile section or more of the stream and the number of reds in any. So we provided each of the uh, people with, with multiple maps based on how much we could get to fit on a, a piece of paper and still make it legible so that they could, not, they could identify the number of reds approximately where they were and also record any erosion so that as we work on projects from 16, 17 forward, we will have a way to prioritize uh, places and also see where the reds are relative to the erosion. And uh, this was Bob Carline's section and he actually did a, G a GPS um, recording of the 39 uh, Item. So I posted it in on the, on this this map, and that's uh, theoretically the actual location. But if you notice, all down through here, they're not they're not in the stream, which just speaks to the accuracy of GPS. <laughs> um, here's Bob Carline um, explaining what a red is and how to how to how to identify one. Here's Al Phillips who did the section with Bob. Uh, testing. Uh, here's Tyler Blackman eating. <laughs> Is that right? You liked it too. Good food. Well, it won't be for long. Not with Joe doing the cooking there. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have labeled the other guys, but I don't know the. I don't know the name of the guy in the the red coat. Chapter activities. Mark Pensick organizes these. Uh, these are some of the speakers, the Nail Brothers, uh, George talking about his streamer fishing, uh, Henry Ramsey, uh, uh, unbelievable uh, presentation on matching eastern hatches. You should get his book if you, it's really great if you're a fly tire. Uh, this is Andrew, I'm not going to try his name again, uh, but uh, he talked about the water resources at Penn State, gave a really good presentation, and Auma, uh, who, who gave the results with, along with their students of the telemetry study on Little J. Uh, Jeff Skelding, uh, the executive director of, of the uh, Upper Del Friends of the Upper Delaware, Amy Wolf from TU's Eastern Abandoned Mine, Upcoming, the next meeting is the Penn State Fly Fishing Club. Um, then Ann Donovan, who is uh, with the uh, Center County Conservation District, it has a nice presentation of all of the watersheds in the Center County area. It's quite an interesting thing. It's not just Spring Creek, but I think you'll find it interesting. Kevin Compton uh, is, he was associated at one point with the uh, U.S. Uh, fly fishing team and he has uh, performance flies and has a shop down in Alexandria. Um, and then we're going to have uh, Greg Hoover uh, who's going to do a presentation on bugs. And finally, uh, for June, uh, rather than the picnic in a general meeting, 
there's a great outdoors day. And Judy, maybe you could tell a little bit about it. Well, this is going to be good. It's National Get Outdoors Day on June 11th. So we figured, why not tag on to national publicity? I've never heard of it before, even though it's been going on for several years. But anyway, National Get Outdoors Day. So we're going to have a family fishing picnic at Tussie Pond, out of Tussie Mountain. It'll be our TU chapter picnic plus. We'll just invite the community. And we'll have stations where we can teach family or whoever casting, we can get the kids fishing, get the parents fishing, catching little sunnies, little bluegills are out there. Um, we've invited Central Pennsylvania Women Anglers who have already actually contributed money to, <laughs> they put their money where their mouth was and I, <laughs> I got a check. So um, Central Pennsylvania Women Anglers are going to participate, they're going to help sponsor Clearwater has pledged at least $100 plus they'll set up a table and they'll get involved. The YMCA will give us publicity and they'll get involved in various ways. And uh, hopefully it'll be a, a, an event that, that I'd like to see happen every year. It's this idea of get your kids off of the computer and get them into outdoor activities, get, get the whole family. Issues. So it's actually going to be June 12th, not the 11th. We thought we had Tussie Pond locked in for June 11th, but then they then she called me back and said, whoops, every year we have some mountain bike activity, some big group swoops in and does mountain biking there, and they failed to. But we're actually getting a reservation for free because. <laughs> really? No. Yeah, Good job, Judy. She said, I'll give your, your check back. Wow. We need to walk it in, and they were going to give us their, their, yeah, their yeah, policies. We have no to money back. So get ready. I'm going to be asking for volunteers for that. Okay. Um, another activity is the uh, annual dinner and fundraiser. Lynn and Dave are continuing as co-chair. Uh, we're, this year it's going to be out at Mountain, Mountain View. Last year we had phenomenal results. We're, we're up $17,000 over two years ago uh, for a variety of reasons, but uh, we had 160 participants. Um, the sponsorship program, uh, the bid for a cause, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and some really good uh, things. Uh, this, these were our major donors in terms of the, uh, the in-kind types of things. Uh, this, I mentioned Rex Energy, who volunteered 250 bucks uh, as part of the sponsorship. And all of these, these are all addition, they're not getting anything out of it but publicity. So the sponsorship program is really starting to pay off. We raised a, a little over $4,000 with that. Uh, we gave Bob Donaldson a well-deserved uh, uh, Order of the Sulphur. Uh, we honored Steve Zielinski and the Fisherman's Paradise uh, for a lifetime award for the f years and years and years of support. Uh, the raffle this year is going to be a Helios 10-foot four-way that he's donated. Tammy Miller uh, did the auction with, and she's back for another year, very excited about it. Uh, this table, uh, every, every TU member at this table donated uh, in the bid for a cause, it was the only 100% table. Um, we, we created a bid for a cause which supported the, uh, to support the veteran service program and uh, Taylor, Bob Whitlinger and Zach, two of them are here, uh, came up and talked about what the program means to them and, and it was a very successful area. And this year will be April the 16th at the Mountain View Country Club. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the Ramada, however, to correct for that problem, we're going out three years in our planning now. 
and locking in the Ramada. Uh, what do we need? We need people to go out and get uh, companies they know to make donations. Uh, Dave Dudukovich does the coordinates that. So uh, if you can find anybody, we'd appreciate it. Uh, we want your participation, and we also are looking for a non-board member to be a member of that committee. So. Uh, we're looking for someone to volunteer and help us that isn't on the board. And I'd appreciate anybody here who, or talk to another member and see if you can, can help us with this, because it, it's really an important event. It is our major fundraiser. Um, we also have this, I mentioned the Center Gives before, we raised about $4,000. Uh, we actually won $1,000 by getting uh, the most donors in a one-hour period at lunch on the second day. And uh, my son, unbeknownst to him, won a hat by donating from Portland, Oregon. He didn't know he donated, but... <laughs> uh, as you know, we started the endowment about four years ago. The endowment is now up to $16,658 generates about $750. We're, right now we're plowing that money back into the investment uh, of the endowment. Um, we've also created a plan giving program and I'm hoping that we'll get that a little bit more underway this year. Uh, we have the annual holiday party. I'm going to go through these pretty quick because these may look familiar since Judy and I and Paula and everybody else who had a camera there didn't take any pictures of this year's. But Judy made her cookies again and it was a great, a great time. And if you can explain how the three of us couldn't have taken any pictures for the entire night. Only one I got was the one of Ed Zip, Ed's wig that somebody took. Uh, we also awarded the uh, George Harvey Award to Barbara Fisher. Uh, this is an award that's given to somebody who's done a fantastic job over history for the Spring Creek Watershed. We partner with Clearwater, and Barbara has been um, active in watershed issues for since about 1965 when she moved, they moved to State College about four now houses down from my house, my old house, the one that, that I was raised in. We attended the, the national um, meeting in Scranton. Uh, Judy won the Distinguished Service Award for Youth Outreach. I would also mention that we were mentioned by John, in John Arway's speech um, and in uh, the National Leadership Council chairs speech. Um, he mentioned four chapters, or six chapters, of which we were one, and talked extollingly about us. And if you want to see what he said about us, it's available on the website. Also, Judy's award is, is videoed and on the website. That was the board, but it doesn't include uh, Mario, but it will. Uh, finally, we come kind of to the stream, the, the stream projects. Uh, Joe and I chair that committee. Uh, this is Shane uh, Adams and Sam Galt doing some maintenance down by the, the backyard makeover. Um, over the past three years, we completed at the end of this year a, a major effort I'll talk a little bit about the finances in a minute, but I'm going to go through each of the, the projects a little bit to show some of the results over, over time. Uh, this was the Milesburg, uh, uh, this was the lower part of the Milesburg thing. That was a before and after, which gives you an indication of, of you know, unbelievable uh, amount of, of vegetation and, and protection. Uh, this is McCoy before on the left and after uh, on the right. 
Um, we, um, this was in August of 14, and uh, it grew up so much, uh, we started the stewardship program, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but here we are at the, the stewardship uh, day in this fall, and you can see the, the growth and so forth, and uh, Lynn and, and Jim are, are the guys who take care of that, but we got the Kappa Sigs to come out and help us. Uh, we made plantings at Deer Creek Lane, Fisherman's Paradise, we did uh, improve the, the parking lots. Uh, this year we did a major planting there. And this is, we started this year, we got an agreement, first agreement we think ever with Fish and Boat that includes herbi uh, approved herbicide treatments. And we got approval for this year and we will have a five year agreement by March or beginning of March to take care of the various sites that we've just been talking about. And, um, but when we were designing the planting, it's, it's kind of a complicated thing because normally you plant the stream and you don't worry about access to it other than to get to the stream. But at Paradise, we needed to protect the fishing capability. So we designed it into sections and identified places, a number of fishermen that we could have. We identified 43 places where we, we could fish. And we've, we've actually started the stewardship program and uh, everybody seems to be very enthusiastic, not only about the, uh, the fishing, but also about what it's doing to replace the trees that were dying and, and so forth. Um, I think I just went through all that except for uh, the, these are the people that are the chair people of the stewardship program. We were, were kind of piggybacking on Clearwater who started it, but basically if you go in and do a riparian planting or this work and you don't have stewards, you're going to lose all the trees. It's not going to be worth it. And so we have a, um, we budgeted this year for the stewardship program. We have volunteers. We have a meeting coming up in February to set out our specific plans. Um, this is the, the, this is the group down at uh, uh, Paradise on uh, a fall day. I don't know which day it was. It was in October. Yeah, it was a fall day. <laughs> uh, along with along with the Paradise Project, we designed a, uh, a three-panel kiosk, and uh, on one side is a map of the canyon. On another side is the history of Paradise, and on the third side is a panel talking about stream improvement, repair, and planting, and so forth, and complementing Spring Creek to you since we did the thing. And Veronese did that, uh, installed that for them. But I, we had to get a permit with lawyers from Fish and Boat in order to put it there. Um, it has, un this was minutes after it was installed, we already had three people looking at it. <laughs> and most of us have never been down there where there isn't somebody looking at the kiosk while we're there. It, it really gets a lot of visibility. This is Rock Road before in the beer can and the mud going into the stream. Uh, this was a year ago, a uh, major storm as you'll see, not a drop going in. Uh, this was Rock Road before on the day that I took the, the picture in the beer can. Uh, we raised the, uh, the level of the parking lot four and a half feet and set the so that the flow would go away from the stream and into a swale. Um, this is an indi uh, another before picture. This is about the same area back and the water now comes down and all of it goes down here, comes out and goes into a swale and I have yet to see water at, you know, any kind of mud reaching and we've had some pretty serious storms 
there's a, we put in a pipe under the road, and I've seen that pipe full, and it still didn't get to the stream. Oak Hall, uh, the, the last of the scheduled projects, uh, we had tried to do it last fall, uh, couldn't, the vendor um, dropped out. We got uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife to uh, help us out. We modified the, the permit and uh, they took on the, the task. This is the road that you saw in, that, in the diagram. And here it is, here's a picture of what it looked like uh, the day before we did it. And here's what it looked like the day it was completed. Uh, this is Adam Smith up on the, um, on the logs. We're working with him for future projects. This is Joe Boston helping with the herbicide. <laughs> <laughs> this guy thinks he's a cop or something. <laughs> you know. Biggest flag you ever saw. Well, uh, this was a serendipitous thing because we had worked with U.S. Fish and Wildlife and Adam, he got their equipment and there was a lot of invasive species in Hauserville. He got a, he got a vehicle and some of their volunteers, plus some of our volunteers, and went in and did um, some riparian planting in there. So another 400 feet of riparian planting. Um, basically at no expense to us, just volunteer time. And then there's the distillery. In 1874, there was a distillery at where, where the old 550, what they call the 550 project was, which is uh, just above the, the footbridge, uh, below the concrete bridge. And uh, I thought that Old Beezer would be a good way to commemorate it. We now call it the, the, the uh, distillery project. And basically it starts below the foot, you see the footbridge there, and the wetlands. These are the um, projects that we're putting in. These, these are the in-stream single log deflectors. The brown part are um, uh, brush deflectors. We'll, we have one of them in, we'll be putting more in with Fish and Boat this year. It won't cost us anything, it'll be just volunteer time. This is a before picture at the distillery. Um, we got the, I just like to compliment uh, Hawbaker because they give us really good prices on the uh, uh, projects. They also put us in the newsletter, Tammy wrote us a a real nice article about what we're doing in their newsletter. Um, we were able to do this because of this vehicle, which takes 13 tons and converts it to 3.9 pounds per square inch uh, as a result of these tracks that are 28 inches wide. <clears throat> and it allowed us to move the material. It probably would have taken three weeks to do it if we hadn't done that. Um, you can see it dumping. That's Tyler in the water. Whoop. This is a this is the picture up that we saw before, and that's what it is after. And I have to say, of all the projects that we've worked on in recent times, I, to me this is the one that is the most impactful. You can really see the impact of the, the channel change. And uh, we actually had some reds there with, that they counted. In summary, we started with a grant of $69,800 with a, we were supposed to get matching of $47,800. We were going to do four of those projects. The Milesburg Project, Fisherman's Paradise, Repair and Planting, and Parking Lot, that was it. Rock Road, we were going to do and Oak Hall. We added the McCoy riparian planting with the uh, using uh, first um, citizens uh, rescue boat to get the people across. We did the deer lane uh, by 
contacting Western Pennsylvania Conservancy and getting all of the items donated. The Hauserville Dome Repair and Planning and the distillery were all add-on projects that had not been planned. Our total match was 165000 versus a planned under 50000 so over three times the amount. We came in at $1.48 under budget in terms of the... Um, in terms of structures, we had planned seven structures, we did 16. 4,000 feet, we did 7,580. Native trees and plant, plant 1,500 to 3,100. That's not feet, that's actual plants, I'm sorry. And then bank stabilization, we had planned 1,200 and we did 1,800. And when we did it, we thought of four partnering organizations. And we aggressively pursued partners. And uh, that's how we got all that. Western Pennsylvania Conservancy provided trees to some of them, and they provided all the tubes and stakes and mats and so forth um, based on a grant they had received from Mellon Bank, saying we were able to work with them on three or four of these different projects. And so we went from four of these guys up to that, that number. And because of the storage, the, uh, the, the stewardship program and the fact that Judy had uh, a whole closet and I've got a basement full and Jim had stuff full of everything. In addition to that, we had all kinds of stuff stored over at Clearwater. Uh, we decided to, to rent a storage unit. Um, and this is taken about three months ago. It's much more full at this point. A uh, couple more things. We're working on a strategic plan for the organization. Um, we, Paula Sowers is the plan coordinator. Uh, we have Ford uh, Stryker, who's a member here, and he volunteered to help us as a consultant. He's in charge of the facilities for Penn State. And he brought Susan Carmel as a plan consultant. And she does strategic planning at Penn State on a rate on a, that's what she gets paid to do. And so she, she's consulting with us. And uh, we have a, a committee and uh, we'd love to have a participant to add that's not on the board if we could. Uh, so see Paula or me or Judy or Jim or anybody. Uh, we're starting off with a, a survey uh, we're in draft number two stage um, and that we will examine demographics, membership interests, and what they call SWAT, which is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We're hoping to get that out in March and April and do the planning uh, in early June and distribute the results of this the strategic plan to the membership um, in uh, July, August, September, and maybe do, do a presentation of it at the September meeting. Not sure you know, how that timing will work. Uh, we're a volunteer organization and getting all those people together may be difficult, but uh, we're, we're working on it. Uh, I'll remind you that we have 100 days and 20 hours. <laughs> you can go to the website <laughs> and see that anytime. And that's all. All right. That's Good. it. Any, any questions?